Have you had a busy summer and you haven't got any gardening done? Well, it's not too late. You can still get that fall garden in. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sweet Bailey Acres. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. It is a really beautiful day. The day started off kind of rough with lots of rain and wind and, and just a lot, a lot of rain this morning, but it's turned into a really beautiful, cool day that um, I just was so excited to be out here. And so um, you might hear some chickens in the background because I am outside today for this video and hopefully the cats won't come in too, but they might. So I want to talk with you guys about 14 different plants that you can plant in your fall garden because it's not too late. If you haven't put in a garden yet this year but you really want to try and grow some things, fall is a great time to do that also. So what is our first plant? Our first plant is green beans and green beans like to sow um, and germinate within like 70 to 80 degrees so right now is a really great time. We're kind of hanging out in that anywhere from 70 to 90 degree weather here in Missouri. And so it'd be a really great time to go ahead and plant those green beans. And a great way to get your beans to germinate is to soak them in a cup of water overnight before you plant them. And that helps to kind of soften up and loosen up that shell so that way they germinate a little easier. When you're sowing your green beans, make sure that you sow them at least three inches apart and you want to make sure that your um, rows are 24 inches apart and so a really good brand or type of bean that you want to grow right now is a bush bean or you can also do wax beans because they will get done before the frost and actually this brand which is called bush blue lake brand is um, the brand i planted this year you want to make sure that it is enough days to harvest before the frost comes otherwise you're going to need to make sure that you have some covering for your plants and if they take even longer to grow before they produce anything, they may not have enough daylight to produce the actual vegetable that or item that you're wanting to harvest from it. So you want to make sure that this time of year in August that they're going to have enough time to be able to have the first frost. And so bush beans, these type, this brand tends to harvest within 58 days. So here in August where we're not likely to get any kind of a... Um, frost until end of October maybe November is a great variety to still plant even though you may have not gotten to plant this summer or maybe your summer harvest just wasn't very good and you want to try replanting so try some bush beans the next item is beets and so I have a couple different varieties of beets here um, one I actually picked up today is called Detroit Red and that was a cat <laughs> and the next one I have is called bulls blood dark red beets and so this one um, harvests within 45 to 55 days and uh, the other one is 60 days so perfect also for our harvest um, you want to make sure that you plant these a good one inch deep and four inches apart Beets do best when they're planted below 75 degrees. Don't worry if you don't see them germinating for a while because sometimes beets can be a little bit slower to germinate and it can take two to three weeks sometimes for them to germinate. They're another one that I will soak for a little bit also just to kind of get that hard shell off. If you fertilize your beets, make sure you go easy on the nitrogen because otherwise you're gonna end up with all greens and very little root. And if you want the root, like I love the root because I love to pickle them, um, you really want to make sure you don't over fertilize with nitrogen. Beets also love sandy, kind of loomy type soil that they can move around in because you, you know, they want to be able to grow down and spread. So you want to make sure that your soil is not hard. Our third plant is broccoli. And broccoli is a great one that if you want to start it inside before moving outside, you can get a really good start on your plant before you move it outside. Um, the one I have with me today is called Sun King Hybrid, is the one I'll be planting, and it comes to harvest within about 71 days. 
You want to make sure you space your rows out about three feet apart for your plants. When you move your plants from outside uh, or from inside to outside, you want to make sure that you plant your plants at least three feet apart. Otherwise, you could end up with a lot smaller broccoli heads. If you start your plants outside, you want to make sure that you plant them at least a half of an inch deep. And if you choose to go the method where you um, thin out your seedlings, once they get about two or three inches tall, you want to go through and thin out those seedlings to anywhere from 12 inches to 20 inches apart because you want to make sure you have enough room for your plants. Um, but I tend to automatically, if I'm going to plant them in the garden, to go ahead and just put them the proper space that they need to be. Um, or you can also put a couple of different seeds in the same hole so that way if one doesn't germinate like you were hoping it would be, maybe another one would. That way you don't have to go back through and pull out your seedlings. Um, that's just how I do it, but you do it your way. It's, it's okay either way. The fourth item today is Brussels sprouts. Ugh. I am not a lover of Brussels sprouts, but you might be. You want to plant your Brussels sprouts at least six to ten weeks before the first frost. So look at your frost date, count back six to ten weeks, and you want to make sure that you plant them at least by then. You want to make sure for your Brussels sprouts that they're in a position, a site where they'll have full sun. You want to make sure that you sow your Brussels sprouts three to four inches apart and make sure your rows are at least 24 inches apart. When you're growing Brussels sprouts, you want to make sure that you also still keep an eye on those cabbage worms because they even, um, they don't just like cabbage, they also like Brussels sprouts. And so row covers are a great way to also help with some of those um, cabbage worms. The fifth item that would grow great in your garden for fall is cabbage. And the two cabbage that I have with me today are, this one is called Fairies Round Dutch and um, it harvests within 71 days. And then the other one I have is called Charleston Wakefield, which is an heirloom cabbage. Um, I'm anxious to see the difference between the two as one is not heirloom and the other one is just to see how they grow different um, and see which one actually is does best to uh, the different diseases as well as bugs um, for the fall. Cabbage, you want the temperature to be above 50 degrees for germination. When your cabbage is in full, um, head of cabbage, you want to make sure, or as it's growing, you want to make sure that the temperatures are not too high above 80 degrees because what can happen is your cabbage can bolt and then you wouldn't have the cabbage head that you're wanting for your cabbages. Uh, you can also try and keep your cabbage cooler by provi providing some shade cloths, um, but in the fall, I would think that that would be a really great time to grow because your temperatures are actually getting cooler versus when you plant in the spring and they're getting warmer and you have to worry about the bolting. The sixth vegetable that you can plant for fall are carrots. And carrots are great because you can leave them in the ground and you can let them stay in the ground and harvest them throughout the winter time. And I actually grow ours in raised beds, which is great because the, the dirt actually stays pretty loose um, for growing them. And I can cover them up if I need to with our, with our covers and um, and they just stay really good. So the two different types that I have here today are, this one is called the Ultimate Hybrid, and it comes to harvest in about 80 days. And then you, and then I also have, this one's called a Rainbow Mix, which is really pretty. It's got all different colored carrots, and it comes to harvest within 60 to 70 days. So even less than, than um, the Ultimate Hybrid carrots. And I think I have a couple of other different different types too that I want to put in the garden because we love carrots and my daughter loves carrots, especially raw ones, and so I want to make sure she gets plenty of carrots. Um, but when you're planting your carrots, you want to make sure that you plant them a fourth of an inch to a half of an inch deep. You also want to make sure that you water the soil before you plant the seeds. And a great trick to help keep the um, seeds from shifting or moving, especially if it's going to rain soon, after you plant is to put a board over the top of them. And they will sprout, because they'll still sprout in the shade. And after, oh, five to 10 days, you'll wanna lift up that board and you'll see little sprouts. And when you start to see them sprouting, you want to go ahead and remove the board at that time. 
but this is just a really great way to just keep the seeds from shifting and so that way you still have your rows and you have your seeds where you're wanting them to be at. Well, hello. We have a visitor. This is Stinky. <laughs> Hi, Stinky. We're kind of in the middle of talking about seeds, bud. All right? Go play with your brother. <laughs> My kid named this one Stinky and another one Angel. Yeah. And another one, Sparkle Bomb. You're purring loud. <laughs> the seventh item for us to plant in our fall garden is cauliflower. And the great part about planting that in fall, oh jeez, guys. All right, Stinky. I understand you want some attention, obviously. Okay, so the, the seventh item, the cauliflower. So the great thing about planting cauliflower in the fall is it doesn't get as hot for the plant and they don't turn yellow like they would for if you plant them in the spring and when you have to cover them so they don't turn yellow. So the, the, the ones I have today are, this one's called Early Snowball. Um, this one is also called Snowball. It's an early one also, which is also another heirloom. And then I have a cauliflower germination mix and so I think it's a variety of if I remember right when I bought it I think it's a variety of different colored ones um, which I'm excited to do because I haven't had a variety of colors and I, I'm pretty sure that's what I got but cauliflower can be a challenge because it does not like hot and it does not like really cold temperatures you want to make sure you set your plants a good 18 to 24 inches apart with cauliflower, you also want to make sure that the rows are 30 inches apart to give them plenty of space to grow. Remember, the more room that you that you have for them, the bigger the heads are going to grow, the more that they can spread out, the more nutrients they can get. You also may want to even use a row cover to keep worms away or to help with them being shaded if it's too hot of a day. You want to try and plant your cauliflower when the daytime temperatures are about 75 degrees. So roughly six to eight weeks before your before your first frost um, would be a great time for you to plant your cauliflower. Let's see, this uh, snowball takes 60 to 70 days to harvest. So September, October, so you'd plant, you would harvest at the end of October, maybe early November, because as the days also shorten, you gotta remember your plants are gonna take a little bit longer to grow than maybe what it actually says on the back of the package. So, um, because the daytime, the daylight has changed. Okay, our next item, which I'm not going to plant any more of this year. Um, I, if you guys watched my corn smut video, I was really, really hoping that we would have some more uh, ears of corn that would be corn smut. Um, I should have taken that corn smut and just rubbed on it and then rubbed it on some other corn. Um, if I had thought about it at the time, so that way we could have some more corn smut because it was so good. I mean, like really good. Your eighth item would be some sweet corn. And right here I have some peaches and cream sweet corn. Um, you can plant other sweet corns, but you wanna really look for the one that has the least amount of days. Uh, this one may take a little bit longer depending on if you, if you live down a little bit further south, um, you might be able to plant the peaches and cream. But it does, this one does take um, 80 to 85 days to mature so the end of August might be a little bit too late for peaches and cream um, maybe early August would be a much better time because that would be August September October you could probably get by with it before you get your first frost um, so corn is something that you can still plant in August as well you want to plant your corn at least one inch deep sure that the plants are at least eight to ten inches apart. The ninth one that you can plant is called kohlrabi and the one I have here is called purple vienna and purple vienna is a purple type of kohlrabi. I believe it comes in green and purple and um, they actually grow on top of uh, on top of the ground but it looks like a root vegetable similar to like a turnip and it grows on top of the ground and it has this coating on the outside that grows around it and you can peel that coating off and you can actually just eat them like an apple raw or you can cook them uh, like you would a turnip or a potato or um, radishes you know roast them um, so they're really good 
you want to make sure with the kohlrabi that you space your um, plant out and your rows out a good 12 to 18 inches apart because again it spreads out wide just like your cabbage or your broccoli and it gets these big leaves on it which you can also eat the leaves but you want to make sure that you spread them out enough to where they can grow and get all the nutrients they do and they don't suffocate each other the kohlrabi heads grow to be about two to three inches in diameter when you when you harvest them the tenth item that you want to grow is lettuce um, so your lettuce your arugula um, your loose leaf really does anybody else have a cat like this who just will not leave you alone <laughs> thinky You've got to go. Okay, so guys, your lettuce. Um, let's see, I have some bronze lettuce here. I have some arugula, um, which those are my heirloom seeds. And then I also have some butter crunch lettuce and some romaine lettuce. And then I just have a kind of a salad bowl mixed lettuce. Um, those are all great for your fall garden. And then if you cover them up in the winter, you can continue to have lettuce um, grow all winter long and so lettuce is great for your garden and you can plant it in between your plants and it takes up space uh, for your for your garden too so that way you don't have too much space in between um, let's see the the lettuce itself like the butter crunch lettuce um, you want in lettuce in general you want to plant about a half an inch deep and this one says that it likes full to partial shade and temperatures between 45 to 65. So it is going to love, love, love the coolness of the fall. Um, you just, like I said, you gotta make sure that with the lettuce that you cover it up if you do have a frost or if a frost is coming. Uh, the 11th item is greens. So your mustard greens, your collard greens, um, those would grow great in the fall. You want to make sure that you plant them about 12 to 18 inches apart and the one that I have is an heirloom one is called Georgia Southern. Your greens will like full sun um, to partial to partial shade uh, as long as it's not too hot they'll want the sh if it's too hot they'll want the shade if it's not too hot full sun is fine. You want to plant these about three to four inches apart and you and you can either start them if you're in a place where it's cooler or at the end of August, early September is a great time to start planting them because you really want to plant them just a, really four to six weeks before your first frost. Um, but if, if, like right now, we're having cooler weather. Um, I actually think that we might end up having a pretty, pretty early fall, winter um, this year, but I could be wrong. But it, it's never, it's never uh, too early to go ahead and plant these when you plant them in August and that way they get germinated and then that way they'll enjoy the cool weather once they've gotten germinated. Collard greens and mustard greens are also another plant that really likes to have well-drained soil uh, and they like it to be loose in about a pH of six to seven. So they're great for a raised bed garden also. If you're someone who likes to harvest something of a plant really quick and you're just really impatient and can't wait for something to grow, our 12th item grows really, really fast and you can really kind of plant these every couple weeks just to keep your harvest going but it's the radish um, radishes are I mean they grow to their roots within 25 to 28 days so you could literally I mean, constantly replant these and have um, a, a supply of food going so the ones I have this one is an heirloom one it's called cherry bell and then the other one that I have is called sparkler white tip um, they look like they're just a smaller one. This one has a coating on it too. So again, I'm anxious to see how well they do one versus the other. Um, but it really hard, these you only need to plant about a half an inch deep. You can plant them, you know, an inch to two inches apart from each other. Um, they're, they're just like carrots. They're mostly harvested for the root versus the, the tops. With radishes, you really want to make sure you keep their water level maintained. Um, that don't let them go too dry and don't let them get too soggy because you want to make sure that they don't crack because when they crack then bugs get in they rot out and they're just, they're just not as good and so you really want to uh, make sure you keep their water supply really level and even even watering the 13th item is spinach 
and spinach is great because you can also grow it all winter underneath the cover and then you'll have plenty of spinach to have over the winter. Um, the one I got here is actually an heirloom one. It's called Bloomsdale Long Standing uh, Heirloom Spinach. And you want to plant your spinach about a half an inch deep uh, to an inch. And you want to make sure that you have plenty of time for them to grow also. But 70 days is usually what it takes for spinach. And um, I just love spinach, especially canned spinach. Um, I don't know, it's just one of those things that I really enjoy, especially in the winter time. The last item, the 14th item, is turnips, <laughs> which also deer love. Uh, so if you're a hunter, you can plant some turnips, and I'm sure those deer will just love them all winter long. But um, so turnips, the one I have here is called a purple top white globe turnip. And this one's great because it takes 55 days to harvest. It'll be perfect for when I'm hunting deer in November. Not quite my September or September hunt, but, but the November hunt they will be. Um, but they'll also be great for us. Um, turnips are a great thing that you can use to cook up and to kind of replace your potatoes if you're not a potato eater. Um, they can. You want to make sure you plant these about a half an inch deep. You want to harvest your turnips when they're about, oh, anywhere from two to four inches around. When turnips are about three to four inches tall, that's when you can go through and thin them out if you want to. And you want to thin them out to where they're a good two to four inches apart from each other. When you thin out your plants, you can use those thinned out plants, you can use those tops as greens for your salad also. Turnips require full sun. Um, they like a lot of sun when they're growing. If you plan to harvest your uh, turnip greens, um, uh, they do better in the shade. So if you really wanna harvest the greens, partial shade is best. If you really wanna harvest the roots, you want more of the full sun. Thanks for hanging out with me everyone. If you could and you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share our videos. Um, that's the best way you can help us out here and get more videos as well as get videos quickly. And we'll see you next time.